number one fear in Americans is public speaking. Often it outranks death as a fear people have. I know a lot of you guys are probably pretty nervous. Stage fright. It's terrifying, isn't it? It's a very valuable thing to take kids and get them comfortable with performing in front of other people. Hello, my name is Hannah Bunker. Get over stage fright. If you get over stage fright, you get over being afraid of life. And that's what DDF does. It creates confidence and it creates a sense of leadership. Camera, I am sold. I will. I'm going to take the punch to DDF. Welcome to DDF. It's good to have you here. <laughs> DDF, which is drama, debate, and forensics. Extra, extra, read all about it. I feel like. It's a very valuable thing to get kids comfortable of speaking their mind and performing in front of other people. Tell me about it. How's it feel? It was awesome. It was so much fun. Wow, this is pretty crazy. It's <laughs> great. BDS was a riot. I mean, when you have 16 kids that are class clown slash top of the class slash nerd material and you just put them in a box, it's hilarious to watch what comes out of it. I can hardly think. I've never heard of DDF till I came to Alaska. I think DDF is magic. It's, it's really a great program. I want people to know about this. It just was such an, an incredibly good experience for me. I love it. It's a heck of a lot of fun. So if you don't do it, you're missing out. With front applause, worse in terms of outright scariness. Two monkeys oh, the suckers, multifarious. Someone put the skull image over it and the you think like pancakes? The drama events are four of them. Solo acting, duet acting, reader's theater, and mime. If you're still searching for stuff, um, read, basically, is what I have to tell you. I will be more than happy to help you edit a script and get it to length. Pick out something you can read today. Pieces are refined. Some pieces fall by the wayside. Others are taken further and further. It's really fun. <laughs> Donovan Moore. <laughs> you skipped my line again. I skipped a line, but you forgot to say the 173 minute eggs I keep. It's all your fault. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just to give an example, my partner and I, my senior year, found a duo interpretation script. Duo interpretation of literature can be either humorous or dramatic. And it was just in the bottom of a big box of scripts. We pulled it out and we were reading it to ourselves and going, wow, this is really funny. The strange thing here is imagine two people having a conversation and then turn them both 90 degrees so that they face you as the audience and you get to see both sides of a conversation simultaneously. People with a magnifying glass. I thought that I would be scolded at my age, Clara. So where will it all end? There's a big difference between reading a script as you would read a book and thinking it's funny and actually getting up and performing and having it still be funny for your audience. So we put a lot of work into that piece, originally just cutting it down to 10 minutes. We cut over two thirds of that script out. So that was quite a challenge and that's a challenge in any acting piece. Well, if you want something pleasant, then let's have silence. Oh. I want to be cremated. Oh, oh, don't. Assembly votes against Patriot Act. Octogenarius arrives night in wrecked truck. Reigns High School graduates 22. <coughs> cool Cat Valley. News. Reader's Theater, the actors stand behind music stands on which they have the script that they're working from. Wide open, can take material from anywhere and splice it together. Really fun event. Uh, my name is Ryan Smalley. I'm a senior in high school. My favorite event would probably be either mime or duet. Mime is obvious, silent acting. Uh, it can be solo, up to as many people as you want in it. The reason that I like mime is because <coughs> it is less focused on vocal communication, more focused on your body language and how you would communicate an event that sometimes might be ridiculous to somebody 
who has never seen you or talked to you before. There's not a single kid that hasn't benefited in terms of their ability to present themselves to people. And in adult life, that's what gets you by. Uh, when I first came into DDF, um, I, as a freshman, I was really kind of a sociopath and my head turned down and I was always mumbling and I didn't really have any friends and didn't have anything to say until DDF changed me. It was awesome. Yeah. It's like we're like not even real anymore. Now I've become a more confident person. I've been able to communicate my thoughts more effectively. I've been able to talk to people and meet people. Of all the activities that a kid could participate in, it is the most likely to beneficially affect the participants down the road in their life. All these people are getting you know, good skills at talking in front of people and interacting and communicating. So you're getting a lot of valuable life experience and you're learning a lot about contemporary events and literature and how to express yourself. And you're having fun at the same time. It's a good deal. DDF isn't all about winning. It's about putting in work and watching that work come back and reward you. And that is why you should join DDF. We're going against Dwight Stone. Yeah, what does that mean? It means they're the scariest good debate team. Yes. And it could be one the one of the people on the team could be the state champion from last year. Iris Kemp said that. Yes. We shall see. Yes. Are you ready? We're ready. Okay. Debate is the most challenging and I think the most um, valuable event in drama, debate, and forensics for the participants. It is structured argumentation about a topic of national interest. We have submitted irrefutable evidence in this debate that proves that the American media does in fact provide us with the information that we need in order to maintain a functional, stable democracy and that is definitely in our best interest. These are the most intense moments in drama, debate, and forensics because the people tend to be pretty bright and also they're watching each other. This is the moment, this is the battle moment in drama, debate, and forensics. So are you trying to insinuate that advertising is a negative thing? I'm saying that it increases rampant consumerism in the United States. So the fact States, that, that people, bad so the fact that we have capitalism, we have people buying things, we have the biggest companies rent, it's it's bad. Don't you agree that it's at a point that's ridiculous right now? People no, are, wouldn't the media be most beneficial if the mainstream media didn't have to be prodded along by independent bloggers, if it just worked in our interest in the first place? Well, I believe these bloggers are actually a very important part of the media because the media is obviously going to be imperfect. Could you please answer my question? My opponents have said several times that there's a monopoly over the market and all they really want to do is make money so they're promoting violence, sensationalism, etc. Our opponents have stated that American democracy is flourishing and that is because of the media. We have presented arguments counter to that. I think that the major issue that this debate comes down to is that of choice, personal free choice. And the beauty of the modern media is that it actually allows us to make this choice, upholding the value of my opponents, which is the greatest amount of satisfaction, basically, for the greatest number. Since there are only five major media corporations, and since so this is increasing violence on television, and this is directly leading to global warming, that this is not going to be very important. It was so much fun. So much fun? It was nice to have a debate that's not, I don't know, low-key. It was very heated. It was fun. It was such a wonderful opportunity for me to see young people at the end of their educational experience in public school just sharing the intelligence, the poise, the um, ability to debate an issue. It just was such an, an incredibly good experience for me. I love debate. I love watching it and, and uh, coaching willing participants in debate. I don't want any of you to go into a debate unprepared. If you go into a debate prepared, you're going to do fine. I want you to be persuasive speakers. A good analogy for public forum would be some sort of fast and interesting game, maybe like soccer where the ball is constantly bouncing back and forth between teams, everybody's thinking on their feet, running as quickly as they can and trying to get all their points in by the end of a three or four minute speech. We do not believe that the news is an addictive system. Okay, so well, agree wait, that this let's, 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 I, I want to talk about that real quick. Um, do you believe that people can get addicted to non-chemical things like sex? 
Well, not having any experience with that, I really am not in a position to say. <laughs> Seeing the look in their eyes when they realized they had just dug themselves a very deep hole was <laughs> always really enjoyable. Oh, Romeo. Oh, Juliet. Romeo. Juliet! <laughs> Hello, my name is Tristan Stevens. Today I'm going to be talking about romanticism. All of three Forensics. Points. It's speech making. Forensics actually means, I, th I looked up the, the definition once, it means marshalling evidence in support of a point. This is an oration, which is a 8 to 10 minute speech flow. Loss of emotion. Original oration, which is a, a persuasive speech where you're, you have a point to make um, that, you know, it could be on the, the evils of environmental pollution uh, or... School districts need to provide services for the learning disabled. And the person takes that and develops an 8 to 10 minute speech meant to persuade the audience and to move them to action. My name is Tristan Stevens. My favorite event was definitely uh, XCOM. XCOM is uh, extemporaneous commentary. It's basically where you walk into a room and they hand you an envelope and you draw three slips of paper out of it. And on each slip of paper is a topic. Now, depending on the people who have been writing the topics, they could range anywhere from bubbles or bicycles to illegal immigration. 20 minutes to prepare a two to five minute speech. It's kind of the luck of the draw in XCOM. I mean, you get three topics, you gotta to pick one of them. When I first drew the topic encyclopedia, I decided to start my speech off with a nice, clear definition. I'll have three main points. First, romanticism in real life. Second, romanticism in the media. I'll give an example for each. And third, why this is having a detrimental effect on our society. I don't know what else to really say on Ding Dong, considering the person that wrote these is Ding Dong himself. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to cut this a little short and say that's the end of my topic. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I think that one of the beauties of XCOM is that less, that more of it is dependent on your presentation and your ability to present your topic to someone rather than the solidity of your analysis. Any conclusion? I'd just like to say, romanticism is everywhere. Romanticism is everywhere. Don't let it catch you. Don't be fooled. <laughs> no, no, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Any final thoughts? That was fun. <laughs> Being in DDF and seeing these kids, not only are they talented and bright, but they're decent to each other, and I think DDF inculcates in them a basic decency and a, and a good perspective on life, and I love being part of that. I said I came here with expectations of doing my best, but I never saw it. Bangs above your eyes, you hear me. One of the joys for me of coaching is to watch kids come in with whatever inhibitions they have and to learn that those inhibitions are holding them back and then to see their internal spirit emerge is really cool. I am going to be busy. Are you? It's a good thing. Yes. But I'm going to be busy. Where's Hannah? As a coach, it's my job to just sort of work with them and see them do something naturally that's worthwhile and then pull it out of them. It's really fun and those kids are really easy to work with. DDF can be very daunting at first. Uh the most important thing I've gained from GDF is definitely confidence. Self-confidence. I no longer really have to pause to think about what I'm going to say. I really like to act and I love being on stage. I can just let it come out while parallel processing and thinking of what I'm going to say next. After you get over that initial, that initial tension that everybody will have, it's just so much fun. Just tons of just fun. It was the most amazing experience of my life.
Communication skills are vital in our society, and BDF is a really fun way to train kids in that respect. Next, next, we all about it. The first domino in the line, and all the rest of it. Go, 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 time, 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 time,